In this video, I'll be walking you through one of the world's best performing stock markets in recent years. That of course is the Indian Nifty 50 index, tracking India's 50 largest companies. Let's explore why you should be interested. First, India now has the world's largest population, having passed China just last year. India has one of the fastest growing economies, bringing along with it hundreds of millions of aspirational consumers that will spend more with their leading companies. Second, India is home to leaders in the digital space, including Tata Consulting, Wipro and Infosys, all multi-billion dollar leaders in their industry. Even in Silicon Valley, Indian nationals run Google, Microsoft, Adobe, Micron, IBM, the list goes on. And third, the returns have rivaled and even surpassed those of the S&P 500 in the US over recent years. In this video, I'm going to share everything there is to know about the index and the companies contained within it. India is a vibrant emerging market that all investors should keep an eye on. If you are new to my channel, I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Make sure to subscribe down below to see all of my future content. I spent about two months last year in India, visiting Kolkata, Indore, Delhi, Agra, Jaipur and Mumbai. I even got married in Indore, so I know the country reasonably well. There are huge opportunities for the country over the next decade and the companies in the Nifty 50 index will be leading the charge to uplift the lower and middle classes. And they've already been doing this, with the GDP of South Asia, of which India is a part, growing about twice as fast as any other region since the 1960s. That's the growth of the past, but even if we look as recent as the fourth quarter of 2023, India easily had the world's fastest growing economy. As the world becomes more digital, India's growth story, I believe, is only just starting. The rate of smartphone penetration has grown in recent years. There's government support for higher labour force participation among women and enormous investment in infrastructure. These factors are just the tip of the iceberg in India's efforts to grow their economy and the companies that power it. So let's explore their leading index. The Nifty 50 is India's benchmark stock market index, which acts as a barometer for how well their economy is performing. When India's economy does well, so too does the Nifty 50 index. The value of the index is derived from the value of India's 50 largest listed companies. If the value of the companies goes up, so too does the index. The 50 companies on the index are the most valued in the country, commonly known as blue chip or household name companies, that almost every Indian households interact with every day. If someone has a bank account, they buy fuel for their car, utilities for their home, take medication, use software at work, almost every day they'll interact with at least half of the companies on the Nifty 50. With the economy set to double between 2024 and 2031, incomes are likely to follow, which will in turn bolster the sales of their leading companies. Since 2008, the Nifty 50 has outperformed many other leading indices around the world, increasing by a whopping 330%. The S&P 500 from the US rose 285%, while New Zealand's NZX50 and Australia's ASX200 rose 232 and 44% respectively. So the Nifty 50 comes out on top. And it wasn't just the best performing since the GFC, but it also came out on top over the past 10 years and even since COVID too. All those factors we spoke about earlier, things like a rapidly growing economy, population and rise of information technology have all contributed to this growth. Let's keep in mind, the S&P 500 index has been booming over the past 10 years thanks to FANG stocks like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla and Nvidia. Even so, India's leading companies have grown even faster completely under the radar of international investors. The index represents about 60% of the free float market capitalization of India's national stock exchange. It's made up of 50 companies, of course, each operating in one of 14 industries. The largest of these is financial services, making up roughly a third of the index. This is followed by information technology and then oil and gas. FMCG, or fast moving consumer goods, automobiles and healthcare then follow. According to the World Bank, between 2011 and 2021, the banked population in India doubled from 35% to 78%. As the largest industry on the Nifty 50 index, the financial services sector benefited greatly, which aided the performance of the index. There are many catalysts for this growth to continue into the future. Cash on delivery is still a popular option for e-commerce. 
35% of bank accounts are inactive, which is seven times the developing world average. 160 million people still pay for essential services in cash, and fintech disruptors such as UPI are increasing the popularity of digital payments. These factors, among many others, will increase the penetration of financial services, combined with the rising disposable incomes of the Indian population. While the world GDP per capita, a proxy for world income levels, rose just under 3% in 2022, India's rose by 6.51%, according to the World Bank, more than double. The Indian financial services market is only set to soar. Jumping over to the second largest sector on the index, information technologies, it shouldn't be a surprise to know it's set for large growth. What started as an opportunity to service offshore companies looking to offshore their IT operations has now become a $250 billion export market for India. IT has transformed in recent years to be a lot more strategic than administrative. Companies like Meta and Tesla are centering their entire growth strategies around data, AI, Web 3.0 and augmented reality. This requires significant computing power and IT infrastructure much of which will be built in India. Tata Consultancy Services, the sixth highest weighting on the Nifty 50 index, has over 600,000 staff around the world, consulting and building the world's largest company's IT infrastructure. America's largest companies are so reliant on Tata for this that they were the second largest issuer of H-1B visas to work in the US. Know what's third, fourth, and seventh on the list? Infosys, Wipro, and Mahindra, all of which feature in the Nifty 50 index as well. The rise of America's tech industry is equally driving India's, with the Nifty 50 index benefiting greatly from this growth, and only sure to continue into the future. Now we're up to the third industry, which is oil, gas, and consumable fuels, which may be surprising. In the West, oil and gas has a bad reputation, especially from investors, as being an antiquated source of energy. BP, for example, has a PE ratio of just seven times. Over in India, vast amounts of energy is required to power their economic growth. Manufacturing, transportation, and construction are all extremely heavy users of energy. Coal, petrol, and natural gas are the lion's share of energy sources for India. Energy drives the developing world into prosperity. Being able to produce more things, build infrastructure, provide basic sanitation, all these things rely on energy. China was no different in their development story. Though smog became a major issue in some of their larger centers, their ability to produce incredible amounts of energy powered their economy to becoming four and a half times bigger than India's, with the same population. India's future growth will be underpinned by having a strong fuel sector with the likes of Reliance, Coal India, and Bharat Petroleums on the Nifty 50 index benefiting. Between the three largest sectors on the Nifty 50 index, namely financial services, IT, and consumable fuels, India's growth story is not yet done, and the Nifty 50 index is well positioned to benefit. Let's now dive into some of the largest companies on the index. Over the past week, there has been a massive pre-wedding event taking place in India. It was hosted by Asia's richest man, Mukesh Ambani, for his son's upcoming wedding. They paid a reported $6 million to Rihanna to perform, and among the 1,200 guests were Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, among many other world billionaires. They also reside in the world's most expensive residence in Mumbai, towering 173 meters high. The company behind the family is Reliance Industries, a massive conglomerate involved in the oil and gas, textiles, retail, telecommunications, media, and entertainment industries. Reliance has the second highest weighting on the Nifty 50 index, and is among the world's 100 largest companies. It has also significantly outperformed the overall Nifty 50 index, rising over 600% over the past decade, versus the 245% of the index. Ahead of Reliance is HDFC Bank, the world's sixth largest bank by market capitalization. It was founded in 1994, and today offers a wide range of modern banking products, including mortgages, auto loans, personal loans, savings accounts, and credit cards. With over 120 million customers, 8,000 branches, and 177,000 employees, HDFC has a stronghold on the Indian financial services sector. Like Reliance, HDFC too has outperformed the Nifty 50 index. Third up, we have another bank, ICICI. It too has its roots set back in 1994, when India allowed private banks to be established. Much like HDFC, ICICI offers the same banking products to the market. They have a smaller presence in the market, however, with a smaller 5,900 branches. One interesting item I saw on their website was their net interest margin of 4.48%, which is extremely profitable for a bank. New Zealand's largest bank, ANZ, offering the exact same products to New Zealand consumers, 
made just 2.64% over the same period. So these Indian banks are profit powerhouses. With retail credit card spending up 60% year over year, according to their website, banks are sure to continue their joy run into the near future. Additionally, over the past decade, the bank has outperformed its bigger brother, HDFC. Next up is Infosys, which has a weighting on the index of nearly 6%. Infosys is a major global IT multinational that built its services around IT outsourcing and consulting. In 2021, it was reported a whopping 60% of their revenue came from the United States, 24% from Europe, and just 3% from India. Nifty 50 companies like Infosys, Tata Consulting, HCL, and Mahindra are heavily export-oriented towards powering the world's IT infrastructure. Interesting fact, the founder's daughter is married to the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. She holds nearly 1% of the company, a stake worth roughly $750 million. In terms of their stock performance, they too have outperformed the broader Nifty 50 index. And finally, we'll take a look at the fifth highest weighted company on the index, ITC Limited. ITC is a conglomerate operating across several sectors, including FMCG, hotels, software, agribusiness, and packaging. It was initially founded in 1910 by the British in Kolkata as a tobacco trading company. In 1925, they built out their packaging and printing arm to aid their downstream tobacco business. In 1975, they entered the hotel business, now operating over 100 luxury hotels across South Asia. In the 1990s, they built out their agribusiness operations. And then in the 2000s, they had quite an exciting time as they entered the IT market and launched their FMCG arm, which has become widely popular across India. Today, it stands as the largest FMCG company in India. Unlike the others in the top five, ITC has underperformed, growing just 78% over the past decade. If you're keen to invest in the Nifty 50 index, there's a few options you have available. You can either invest in the companies directly or through a fund. If you are based in India, you can invest directly into individual shares through a broker on the National Stock Exchange. If you're based outside of India or as an NRI, Many Nifty 50 stocks are listed on the NASDAQ exchange through ADRs, or American Depository Receipts. This is a common approach for investing in the likes of Alibaba, NEO, and Taiwan Semiconductors too. If you don't want to invest in the individual companies, and you'd rather invest through the Nifty 50 index, in India many mutual funds have been set up by banks and insurers, giving you access to invest. Outside of India, there are two leading ETFs available through any good broker. The iShares India 50 ETF is available on the NASDAQ exchange. It has a management fee of 0.89% a year, which is on the higher end of things, but it is backed by asset management powerhouse BlackRock. Another is the Global X India Nifty 50 ETF, which is offered on the Australian Stock Exchange. It charges an annual management fee of a lower 0.69%. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space, so stay tuned for more. If you want me to post more content about the Indian stock market, please let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.